Hello from wherever you're watching and this is J1 teaching program from A to Z. In this edition I want to give you everything that you need to know and more especially I want to give you tips and tricks uh, for people coming from Kenya, Ghana and Cameroon but it is av available and applicable to every other country. So stay tuned and I recommend that you bookmark this video because it will be the most helpful video that you've ever seen in a very long time. So I want to start with an overview. The overview is that in this edition we shall look at uh, benefits of the J1 program, understanding the J1 program, preparing to apply, application process, securing a placement, visa processing, preparing to travel, settling in the U.S., overcoming challenges, maximizing the experience, and end of program and the next steps. But uh, who am I? Now, as you can see, that is a bad picture of me. I'm a math teacher who has benefited from the J1 program, and I aim to help other teachers to do the same. So I'm hoping that you will benefit from this. My social media handle is this here is Rashid Mze. Please consider giving me some uh, likes and feedback and also liking this video, okay? Good. So let's look at the first part, which is understanding the J1 program. And in this part, we want to look at what is the J1 program, what is the purpose of the program, benefits of the program, eligibility criteria, duration of the program, and the opportunities for extension. And I'll start by giving you what a J1 program is. The J1 program is a cultural exchange initiative administered by the U.S. Department of State, and it enables international participants to work, study, or gain professional experience in the United States while fostering mutual cultural understanding. Specifically for the, J1 for the teachers, the J1 visa program allows qualified educators to teach in accredited U.S. schools to share their home country culture and to learn about the American teaching practices. The program prog promotes educational and cultural exchange between the U.S. and other countries. So, what are the key benefits as a J-1 teacher in the United States? Now, there are about seven or eight of them. The first one is professional growth. You will gain international teaching experience in the new education system and you'll enhance your skills by working in diverse classrooms. You'll also access, have access to uh, professional development opportunities and resources. Secondly, there is cultural exchange. And uh, for cultural exchange, you'll share your home, cu uh, home culture with students and colleagues, fostering a mutual understanding. You'll learn about the Amer American culture and values and traditions. You'll build a lasting relationship with students and colleagues and the community. Thirdly, there is networking opportunities. That means that you'll connect to educators from around the world because it's not just your country or it's not just the U.S. that you are talking about, but you're talking about teachers from all over the, the world. Also, there is a financial benefit, which means that uh, you'll get some salaries. There is competitive salaries in the U.S. education system, even though teachers are not the best paid, but at least there is some money you, that you'll get. You have potential to save money while working abroad and also you have the opportunity to support family back home financially. The other thing is personal growth. And uh, in this personal growth, you'll develop adaptability and problem solving skills. You'll adjusting to new environment. You'll improve your English proficiency in a, before, because you'll be in an English native speaking environment. Also, you'll gain independence and confidence from living abroad. Now, for, a glo uh, for the global perspective, you will broaden your understanding of educational practices. You will contribute into international uh, collaboration in teaching. You will bring new teaching strategies and insights to, back to your home country. Then also uh, for travel opportunities, you will explore the U.S. during your breaks, during your summers, during your uh, short breaks, you will be exploring all the, the entire country. You will visit iconic landmarks. You will have experiences that are different from where, where you used to. And of, uh, Lastly, cultural immersion for your family. If you bring your family, 
of course your children can access quality education and you, they'll immerse themselves in the multi multicultural en environment so there is so much benefits of teaching in the u.s as a j1 teacher now how are you how do you get eligible to to qualify for j1 teaching now the first qualification is that you have at least a bachelor's degree in education or the subject area that you wish to teach now alternatively you should possess equivalent qualifications from certification required to teach in primary or secondary in your home country but most of them will re require that you have a bachelor's degree they will require that you hold a bachelor's degree in education now secondly you'll have at least two years of full-time teaching experience in primary sec uh, secondary or special education so you must have at least two years that means that two years and above of primary secondary or special education so you know that schools where there is a special education only so you must have that then uh, thirdly you must demonstrate you must demonstrate sufficient english language proficiency to function effectively in an american classroom now they do not really require that you do english tests apart from maybe texas but most of them just require that you you demonstrate that you understand english that means that either you can say you can show your university can send documentation showing that the language that they used for uh, instruction was english also they can write you a letter they can usually show i think there's a way your university can show that that will be enough proof some of these sponsors will require that you take a, a test an english test and this test is not as difficult if you're an english speaker you should be able to ace this test okay good now there are some eligibilities again there's a cultural exchange goal one of the things that you need to do is you, you have to exhibit an interest in cultural exchange. You must be interested in exchanging your culture with other people. Okay. Now you must be currently employed as a teacher in your home country. This is a very, very important requirement. Most of them do not take this lightly. If you're not employed, they just reject your application. So be currently employed as a teacher in your home country and lastly be of good character that is have a certificate of good good conduct from your police clearance pass any necessary background checks of course they'll do an fbi check on you here and also you will be sponsored by a j1 visa sponsor program so those six qualifications are what makes you uh, the criteria for j1 teaching now how long is the program the initial J1 program is usually three years. So three years is how long the program takes. But you may apply for something called the two-year extension, which allows you for, to teach for another two years, which means that in maximum you have five years of teaching. Now, the two years, it's not automatic. The two years is upon you meeting program requirements and also upon the willingness of the sponsoring organization to continue the partnership so if you're in bad blood with your sponsor then mostly there will not be opportunity for extension but most uh, teachers i've seen usually have very good relationship with their sponsor and they usually get extended i've not seen someone who has been denied extension for a long time okay now also if you want to extend your stay there's a few things you must do. First, you must demonstrate successful performance in the teaching role. You must be a good teacher. Second, you must show continued alignment with the cultural exchange goals of the program. That means you must have shown that you've connected your school with the, your culture. Third, you must secure approval from your school, your school and your program sponsor. So your school district plays a vital role in extension because the, the school will ask you, you will ask the school for permission to extend. And if they like you, they will say yes. So make sure that you're doing a good job so that you are able to extend. Now, after completing the J1 program, 
you are generally expected to return to your home country to share the experience and contribute to your local education system. This is called the two-year home residency rule. However, many teachers explore other visa options such as the H-1B visa. Others explore other types of visas. Others get into teach, uh, becoming students, so they get into the F-1 visa. And others go get a green card and get into long-term uh, employment and stuff like that. So after the five years, you have to go home for the two-year residency rule unless you receive a waiver from your country that says that you cannot, you, it's okay to stay here. If you receive that waiver, then you have to change your visa status from, H, uh, from J1 to another visa, maybe an F1 or H1B or any other visa. Now, this program is an excellent opportunity for professional development, cultural, cultural exchange, and global collaboration in education. I hope this now gives you a good understanding of the J1 program. And now we want, want to go into the second part of this presentation, which is how to prepare for application. And in this part, I want to go through three things, and four things, I mean, I want to do finding schools and districts, finding program sponsors, collecting the necessary documents, and networking. So four things that we want to talk about. And we shall start with the first one, which is finding schools and districts. Now, the U.S. Department of State designates specific organizations to sponsor J-1 exchange visitors, including teachers. These sponsors are responsible for facilitating placements and ensuring compliance with program regulations. So I have a list which is seven pages long. I have a list of sponsors as at December 2024. This list keeps changing. I hope to do a second video just to give you a new list. I recommend that you screenshot these seven so that you have all this in your possession so that in case this video is taken down or for whatever reason or my channel is no longer there you can always just go back to the list and read now i got this list from the official designated uh, sponsoring organizations this is the first page so i will read them quickly because you can always go and screenshot alliance abroad group alliance abroad group this is uh, and this is in texas and these are their phone numbers okay these are their phone numbers MIT Institute, Brookline High School, California Department of Education, Camp Counselor USA or Teacher USA, Center for International Education, Do Doing Business, this is Doing Business as Participate Learning, Chicago Public Schools, Cordell Hall Foundation for International Education, Council for the Development of French in Louisiana, Cultural Vistas, Dallas Independent School District in Texas, Delaware Department of Education, Denver County School District or Denver Public Schools, Ecole Bilingue de Berkeley, I, I hope that's right, Education Service Center Region 13, Educational Partners International or EPI, this is EPI, Florida Department of Education, Foreign Academic and Cultural Exchange Services, this is the, the organization that brought me to the US, this is called FACES, French American School of Puget Sound or Paget Sound, French American School of New York, GeoVisions, GeoVision Incorporated, German American Partnership Program, Global Ambassadors Program, GAP, Global Education Concept, GEC, Global Teaching Partners, GTP, Greenheart Exchange, HRC International, Illinois State Board of Education, Institute of International Education, IIE, Interledge Incorporated, International Alliance Group, IAG, International Expert Resources, IER, International Leadership of Texas, ILT, International School of Denver, ISD, ISD, International School of Indiana, International Teacher Exchange Services, LLC, Intrax Teacher Exchange, Iowa Department of Education, J1 Visa Exchange in, in, Incorporated, Kansas State Department of Education, Kentucky Department of Education, Le Lycee Francis de Los Angeles, 
Louisiana Department of Education, Lycee Francias de New York, Lycee International Boston International School of Boston, Lycee Rochambeau Incorporated, Massachusetts Department of Edu Elementary Edu and, and Secondary Education, Minnesota Department of Education, Montessori Consortium of California, New Mexico State Department of Education, Northwest International Student Exchange, Ohio Department of Education, Palmetto Academic and Cultural Teachers. This is PACT. Peoria Public Schools, PPS. Sagamore Institute, SI. San Diego French American School. South Carolina Department of Education. Spirit Cultural Exchange. Teacher Council Incorporated. The Audi International School. The International School of San Francisco. TPG Cultural Exchange. This is a big one also. Uh, United States Virgin Island Department of Education, USA Employment LLC, Utah State Office Education, and World Zionist Organization American Section. Now, these are 68 sponsoring organizations. So you can go through all the lists, and also you can just type their name in the internet. You should be able to find their website, and using that website, you can be able to apply for positions. Okay? Good. Now, how do you engage with the organizations? Most of the organizations have websites, just like I've just said, and they provide prospective teachers with a portal where you sign up and then you complete an initial application for screening. Now, when you sign up the first time, it's an application for screening, okay? And that application, it gets, it go, gets to one person and that person looks through your paperwork and that is what determines whether you can proceed. So once you, now there's one thing to note. Once you start your application, please treat the application as if your prospective employer can see all the details that you input even before you hit the submit button. Don't think that they will be looking through when you hit submit because they can see what you do, okay? So, and I, I caution here, do not, do not start the process if you're missing any documentation. Do, now, what I mean is don't start and stop because it will cost unnecessary delays and this will show that you're not very professional with your work. So don't start if you're not ready. Okay? What do you need? What documentation do you need? You need a birth certificate. You need your valid passport. You need your teaching credentials. And for all these documents, make sure that your name is consistent. So from your birth certificate, your valid passport, your teaching credential. Teaching cre credential is the letter that shows that you are qualified to teach in your country. Okay, that is what we call the teaching credential. And then you need a degree certificate, your degree certificate and your transcripts, all of them. You need experience letters and these letters you'll get from three referees. Preferably your head teacher, your deputy head teacher, and your head of department. Also, you'll need proof of English proficiency. That is a letter from your university stating that your English was a medium of instruction. You'll need your driving license. Do not bring a virtual license because uh, some virtual licenses are fake. So make sure you have a license. Just scan that license just like you could, you'll scan your passport. Now, there is one thing called credential evaluation that you also need. Let me talk about credential evaluation. Credential evaluation involves reviewing and translating your academic qualifications. That is your degrees, your transcripts, and your certificates into uh, the U.S. educational equivalency. Credential evaluation ensures that your qualifications meet the, requires, the requirements of the U.S. schools and licensing authorities. You will incur the cost of credential evaluation. It's usually between $150 to $250. Now, FACES has a link that gives you a shortcut, not a shortcut, but gives you some discount when you do credential evaluation with Spantran. So let me talk about Spantran a little bit because it's most, most organizations that want teachers will accept Spantran evaluation. Now, Spantran is changing their name to the evaluation company, and they are calling themselves TEC, or TEC, the evaluation company. And this is their website. 
So you can take a screenshot of this. This is the website of Spantran. You can always take a screenshot of this so that you can be able to just work with, the, with them. The evaluation, that is evalcompany.com. That is a new Spantran website. When you click on that link, it brings you here. And because you do not have an account, you will create an account, okay? Because you don't have an account, you'll create an account. You click on this one here, create an account. If you do have an account and you've already created, then you can always just sign in, put your email address there and your password, and maybe remember you if you're using your computer and you log in. But because you do not have an account, you'll click create an account and it will bring you to this other page here where it will tell you to get started. You'll put your name here your email address, your password, choose a password of your choice and write the password again. Write it down so that you don't forget the password. Remember yourself and then create the account. Okay. And once you've created the account, then you will now go into uploading your documents and then it will ask you what type of analysis do you want? There's usually so many types of analysis that sponsored Spantran offers. Now, for your case, I recommend that you go to teacher course analysis, okay? Teacher course analysis is the best option for you. Go to teacher course analysis or course by course analysis. The, uh, teacher course analysis or course by course analysis. Please do not go for these other ones, okay? Do not go for general analysis because that will not be functional do not go for general analysis do not go for the divisional of course you're not a nurse so we're not talking about that you're not an engineer we're not talking about that okay so just go for this and that good now the next thing we want to talk about is when you're doing your analysis usually they ask spantran you will put your documents into spantran and then Spantran will ask you to contact your, either they, they will contact your university or you contact your university for them. Please make sure you choose. I usually say that to save on costs, you will, uh, you will contact your institution. So contact your institution to make sure that they send your documents directly to the Spantran and make sure they use the university registrar email. Don't use any other email. If they use another email, it will be rejected. So make sure it is the registrar that is sending the, the documentation. Okay. Also, usually it's a good idea to cons confirm with the school, the J1 or the licensing body, which agency or the type of evaluation they prefer. So if you, before you do an evaluation, and for example, if you're going to California, they may require someone else to evaluate for you. So don't just evaluate. Uh, go first, confirm with them whom do you prefer. Plan for costs of between $150 to $250, depending on how big your thing is. And also, confirm if the recipient, that is the school, accepts the evaluations from Spantran or WES, W-E-S. WES is, <coughs> excuse me, WES is really well known, but uh, it takes a while to, it takes like a, up to 20, 20 working days to confirm your evaluation. Now, if you use any other agency, make sure that the agency that you're using is NACES certified, N-A-C-E-S. Make sure they are NACES certified. You can always go into the NACES website and check that uh, organization, okay? Good. Now, how then do you continue with this? Now, you can network. That is, you can join WhatsApp group. Now there are very many WhatsApp groups. There are very many Telegram channels. There is very many YouTube channels. There is very many social media groups, X platform, where people share information about these opportunities. And the more information you can come across, the better your chances in the entire process. So please psychologically start preparing yourself for interviews. Okay, good. Now let's move on to the third part, which is the application process. Now, in this application process, we shall talk about finding a sponsor. Now, we've already talked about finding a sponsor. We'll talk about crafting an effective CV or a resume, what you need to put in. 
writing a compelling cover letter, what tips that you need to put in there, and tips for acing the interview. Now, I have already reviewed a list of 68 sponsors. Now, if you didn't see the list, just scroll back to the end of the video, to the start of the video. I have given some list. Screenshot that list so that you can keep it in your, in your phone. And if you lose your phone, subscribe to the channel so that you can always come back and get the list again, okay? Then you can also reach out directly. There's some sponsoring organizations that you can always just reach out directly and write them a, an inquiry letter. Ask them, hey, are you currently having any teaching opportunities? And what do I need to apply with you, okay? That is a good opportunity. Now, let's look at how to craft your uh, CV. Okay. A US, CV, a US style CV or resume, resume is often shorter and more focused than those in other countries. It is tailored, tailor your CV to highlight your qualifications, your teaching experience, and the cultural exchange potential. That is the most important thing. They are just going to look at your qualifications, your teaching experience, and how you're going to change the culture or what culture you're bringing in here. Now, these are the some of the parts that I went through and I want to just bring to your attention. First, you'll have your contact information. And here, you'll include your name, your email, your phone number, and your address. Now, you can also put your LinkedIn profile if you have one. I don't think it's necessary if you do not have one. But I, I recommend that as a teacher, you should have a LinkedIn profile, okay? Then you'll do a professional summary, just two to three sentences highlighting your experience. For example, I'm an experienced math teacher with eight years of teaching secondary school students. I'm skilled in engaging diverse classrooms and passionate about cross-cultural education. I'm seeking to bring innovative practices to a U.S. classroom as part of the J1 teacher program. Now, please remember that many people will be watching this video and many of them will be copying this directly. So try to twist yours so that it doesn't look like the same, okay? Now, again, on your education, list your degrees, your certifications, and your relevant coursework. Just leave in order of from the, the most relevant, most recently obtained, okay? List them from your most re, uh, recently obtained. Then also teaching experience, highlight your achievements and responsibilities. In bullet points, focus on measurable, make sure it's measurable outcomes. For example, I increased student math proficiency score by 15% through differentiated instruction and interactive lesson planning. So that is a measurable because it is 15%, okay? Then skills include classroom management skills, curriculum design, technology tools. Look at skills that are required. Do not put just this, uh, how do you call them? Do not put just skills so that you fill the CV, but put things that are user-friendly. And then cultural exchange contribution. Mention any experience uh, about what your culture or how you're going to pl promote global awareness, what you're going to bring in with your culture. Now, let's look at uh, the cover letter. And for the cover letter, you will maybe have about uh, four paragraphs. The first paragraph is explaining why you're interested in the J1 program and the op uh, teaching opportunities. For example, I'm excited to apply for a teaching position through the J1 visa program. As an experienced educator, I'm passionate about cultural, cultural exchange, and I look forward to contributing to a U.S. classroom while sharing my home country's rich traditions. Highlight your qualifications. So describe your teaching experience skills, for example. With over a decade or with over two years of teaching experience, teaching science in a high school, I've developed innovative strategies to engage learners and build collaborative classroom environment. Make sure you at least talk about your classroom and the way it's nice, and you know, the way your children love your work. Then the third paragraph is the cultural exchange. How are you bringing culture? What, is, what are you bringing in? For example, I look forward to sharing the Kenyan tradition with your students, enriching the understanding of the world while learning from their perspectives. Then the last one, you will thank them 
Thank you for considering my application and I look forward to an opportunity to discuss how my teaching experience and passion for global education align with your program goals. And then just complete the letter, yours uh, whatever, faithfully, yours uh, truly or you whatever you want to do and say that and then say we're looking forward to hearing from you. Okay. Once you do all this, so now you have uploaded your documents, you have done your credential evaluation, you have uh, uploaded this video, guess what will happen? What will happen is that you will now be ready for interviewing. So you need tips on interviewing. I have done videos on how to interview. There are very many of them, but I have four questions that I want I have here that I want us to talk about. The first one is why do you want to teach in the US? So tell them why you want to teach. First of all, if you've been teaching for a long while, you can talk about a career change, you can talk about moving, you getting a global experience, you can talk about the type of students that you want to engage, you can talk about having wanting to change the world. You can talk about anything that you want that makes excuse me that makes you want to teach in the US. Then the second one is how do you incorporate cultural exchange into your teaching? Of course, look for culturally responsive teaching. Google culturally responsive teaching and see what ideas you can bring out from that. Then the third one, this is a very common one. Describe a challenging situation in your classroom and how you handle it. Usually I tell my uh, my viewers that please look for a situation where it was you that initiated change. Don't let it be a situation where you had to take the kid to someone else. You know, make it a story such that you are the one who initiated the change. Then what teaching strategies do you use to engage diverse learners? Make sure your teaching strategies are learner-centered. Learner okay, so please Google learner-centered teaching strategies. Now, there are some hints here. Emphasize collaboration and student-centered teaching approach. Share examples of how you embrace diversity and inclusivity in your classroom. Highlight your openness to learning and growing from the U.S. teaching experience because this is ex this experience will be very different from what you're used to. Okay, good. And now we move on to part four. So I'm assuming that from part one to part three, you have been successful and you have been taken. You have been picked as one of the teachers and congratulations for having been picked. Congratulations. So let's now look at part four where you go to visa processing. In this part, we want to talk about something called a DS 2019 as SEVIS fees or service fees, how to book a visa interview, tips for a successful visa interview and questions, a document checklist before you move to the visa interview, and best practices at the visa interview. Okay, good. Let's start with the DS 2019. That is the Certificate of Eligibility. It's also called the Certificate of Eligibility. So the DS 2019 is a critical document issued by, uh, by your program sponsor. It certifies your eligibility for the J1 program and provides details about your programming program, including the duration, the purpose, and the costs. Okay, once you obtain it, You've been accepted by a sponsor and have secured a teaching position. They will, uh, this, they will, they will provide you with all necessary documentation like uh, the passport copy, teaching credential and all that. What is in the form? Personal information, start date, program start date, and program end date. Make sure you know these things. It also gives you the sponsor information, their address, where they stay, where they, the state where they are, and which, which things they sponsor, all that. It gives you all that. Then it also gives you a service ID. Now, this ID, we shall look at it in the next, uh, in the next slide. Service ID is used for paying fees, sponsor fees. Okay. 
So this is a DS2019 form. Now this form is what determines your valid validity of your stay in the US. If you lose this form, you must get another one. This Without this form, you cannot travel, okay? Now, what is a service? Now, the service is a fee that is mandatorily paid by the to the U.S. Department of Homeland Security for managing students. Actually, service means student and exchange visitor information system. That is what service means. So it's a record, it's a service, it's a, an information system record where they manage who is in, who is out, when they went, when they left, and all that. Now you'll pay, I think it's about $220 for service fee and you pay it in this website here so can you just type this website fmjfee.com and if you type that website you should see uh, the service fee uh, website here and here it is you just click here pay fee that is the service just click pay fee and then you will be directed into how to pay that fee, okay? Now, once you pay the fee, please save your receipt. Your receipt will be your proof of your visa, uh, as proof for your visa interview because you'll need that receipt that you pay that fee. Some organizations, like some sponsors, will pay the fee for you. But if they do not, then it is up to you to pay the $220. Now you've paid your visa fee, you have your DS2019, guess what? Now you're booking your visa interview. So after receiving your DS2019 and paying your service fee, you need to book the visa appointment at the U.S. Embassy Consulate. Now you'll complete a DS160 form. That, that is called a non-immigrant visa application, DS160. Now you have a DS2019, you have a service fee, service form, and now you have a DS-160. Now you have three documents, okay? Then you'll receive a confirmation page with a barcode. This barcode is very important. With this barcode, you'll create a profile on the website of your local U.S. Embassy or Consulate. Pay the visa application fee, which is $160. Then schedule your interview by providing your DS-160 confirmation. So you have your DS-160 confirmation number, which is on the barcode, and also your service receipt number. Okay? Now, make sure you book early because slots may fill up like in the next two or three months. So make sure you book as soon as you get your DS-2019. Make sure you pay your service and go book your, book your, your, your interview. Ensure that your documents are in order. Okay, so if you go, you've done all this and you're ready for the interview, there are a few things that they will ask you. Now, there's this, these are uh, the common questions. Why do you want to teach in the U.S.? What do you know about the J-1 program? How will this experience benefit you, your career? What subject and grade level will you teach in the U.S.? As at times, they even ask you, like, can you... Give me a sample of a class, how you'll handle your class if they have time. What are your plans after completing the program? This is a very tricky question because this is asking you to show how you're going to come back and what you're going to do when you come back. Okay? So what are your plans after completing the program? Make sure you have this in mind when you're going for that interview. Now, here is a document. I want you to screenshot this because you'll need it. This is the screenshot of the documents that you will require before you go to the visa interview. Now, I also uh, forgot to include, you need a passport photo. So passport photo is one of them, okay? I don't know whether I can write. Passport photo. Oh, I can't write for nothing. There you go. So that's number 12. So passport, DS2019, service fee, DS160, visa fee payment receipt, job offer letter, sometimes it's a contract, 
proof of ties to your home country. Now, what is a proof of tie? Proof of tie can be family pictures, proof of a business ownership, family ties, property ownership. Family ties might be maybe you have children, you have a spouse, maybe you have your mother, you have your father in the, the country. Show that you, the, you, you have a strong family tie. That is, that is what they call family tie. Sometimes, for some, I don't know whether they will require this for you, but they've never required it for J1, but they may sometimes require financial documents. That is bank statement of the sponsor or sponsor affidavit that says that they will sponsor you. Then they also need your educational credentials. Please carry all your credentials, your certificates, your transcripts, your degrees. Make sure you carry all that. Carry your CV detailing your prof professional experience. Anything else that you think you may require, anything that you think you may require, please carry it. Don't just say that I don't need this. Just carry it. You'd rather have more than have less in that office because you have very few minutes with those people. Okay? Good. And when you're in that office, be honest. Clearly articulate your purpose for participating in the program. Demonstrate your confidence. Speak clearly and maintain good posture and eye contact. Stay focused. Answer questions directly without unnecessary detail. Highlight cultural exchange goals. Em emphasize that. And then show strong ties home. So assure the officer that you plan to return home after completing the program. Good. So you've just finished your thing. You've been given your stamp. You've been told, welcome to... Uh, this is a great opportunity. So now we go into part five, which is preparing to travel. In this part, we're looking at financial planning, booking flights and finding accommodation, and then packing essentials. So what do you do? First, as soon as, uh, as soon as you first, you get your, your visa, make sure you plan for the flight. Okay, now let's look at the costs so far. The first one was the initial costs. Now, what are the initial costs? We had uh, the visa application, the processing fees, the service fees, the visa fees, and the, your transportation to and from the place. Then now you have the flight costs. It might be a one way on a round trip, depending on how your country is. Then you need accommodation deposit. That means if you come here, they will require security deposit. And this you need as much as $2,000 because you never know. Some may require first month rent and a security deposit. Okay. Now, make sure you plan for the first two to three months of the living expenses because sometimes they bring you here when schools are closed, which means that you will be not be working. While you'll be uh, you'll be eating, you'll be traveling, you'll be doing all this. So plan for two to three months of living expense until you receive your first paycheck. Rent is typically moving between eight hundred to one thousand five hundred dollars. It really really varies by location, and I cannot really tell you what how much rent you'll get. Utilities one hundred to two hundred, or sometimes three hundred per month. That is uh, water, electricity, garbage collection, and all that. <clears throat> Transportation also varies if you get a car, depending on whether you have a car, public transport, Uber, and all that. Uber, it might be go high, higher than 300. Food might be about 300 to 500. But please budget for all unexpected expenses, okay? Such as healthcare, you might fall sick, or if you need teaching supplies, things like that. Please budget for all that, okay? Now, when you're booking a flight, book your flight as soon as your visa is approved. Please do not book before your visa is approved, before you touch your visa in your hand. If you have your visa in your hand, go ahead and book your flight. Choose an airport near your teaching location because the U.S. is such a big place that if you choose the wrong airport, you will be, you will really be stressed because you might need another flight to go to the correct airport. Also, some places share names, like there are two Charlestons. So one Charleston is in South Carolina, another one is in some other place. So make sure you're on the correct Charleston if you're going to Charleston. Make sure you're in the correct Somerville if you're going to Somerville, you know. Make sure it's the correct state and the correct, the, the correct place 
look at it in the map okay if you're unsure of your return plan book a one-way ticket mostly book one-way tickets and or a refundable round trip ticket now check baggage allowances it's around 23 kilograms or 50 pounds because excess fee is just unnecessary don't carry too much you don't have you don't need all that okay triple check the number of baggage allowed for each traveler just triple check how much can i carry is it 23 kilograms per bag or is it 23 kilograms total and do i need can i get a, a bag to carry into the flight and all those ask them all those questions okay also how do you look for accommodation there are very many types of accommodation there is short term which is you can get an airbnb around the place where you are you can get extended stay hostels these are places until you find some accommodation you can find motels near you where they have day rates or week rates you can take a weekly rate or you can go for long-term rentals so you can search for apartments or shared housing near your school use websites such as zillow or apartments.com please do not use craigslist or facebook marketplace this craigslist has a lot of scammers facebook marketplace has a lot of scammers so make sure do not give anyone money before you get to an office and sign a lease okay there's a lot of scamming in apartments now also ask your sponsor or your district for housing recommendations or you can connect with fellow teachers those who are coming with you if you're in a group ask them how we, you can share accommodation that is one way of ensuring that you have accommodation what do you consider when you're looking for accommodation how far is it from the school can i get transportation to the school can i afford the rent can i afford the renting terms the lease terms is it a one-year lease is it a five-year lease of course don't get into things like five-year lease just take one year or six months or three months renewable things like that okay now i want to give you another checklist this is now your travel packaging checklist travel package checklist this one please screenshot this because you will need it and i'll pause for a minute this has been a minute if you've been with me from the beginning congratulations you've uh, you're almost there we are moving into past six after this and this is the list that you'll need before you travel these documents are required again passport ds 2019 service fee receipt job letter or contract copies of credentials copies of health and immunization records bank statements and proof of funds international driver's license then for your clothing you, re, you, you need winter or warm clothes, boots, gloves, and thermal wear. Now, for people coming from Africa, I recommend that you get some winter clothing, some form of winter clothing, because usually we find this place very cold the first few days, because we also have, they, they have air conditioning all over the place. So just carry some warm clothing, some sweater, some jacket. Now, also get some comfortable wear, Light, lightweight clothing and all that pack professional attire for work dresses shirts blouses slacks ties things like that but just a few of them because you can still go to stores here and find clothes that fit you well okay now please do not forget that you're coming for cultural exchange so bring your traditional attire if you'd like to share you actually like to share so bring it bring that traditional attire that is something that you'll be sharing with the kids here okay so bring this traditional attire for special events now you also need teaching materials you do not need to really bring them but you can bring your flags your types of books your artifacts my my, my thing is blocking blocking what's what's wrong with you artifacts you have lesson plans you can bring copies of your lesson plan you can bring basic supplies you don't need to bring this ones now you can bring your laptop and your charger and any necessary uh, softwares please make sure that you install genuine things in your computer don't bring fake stuff okay like windows make sure your windows is genuine 
Then the last part of this presentation is now you're settling in. Welcome to America. You've just come in and now you want to settle. I'm hoping to do this in under one hour. First, you'll go to orientation, then adjustment, then navigating, then opening an account and transportation and finding local communities. How does orientation work? So orientation is sometimes they do it, sometimes they don't, depending on what time you come in. Do not really expect orientation. But if they do it, this is what they will do. There's an overview of the J1 program. They will give you the rules, the responsibility, your responsibilities as a teacher, information about the school system, the teaching standards, the cultural expectation on, on the U.S. classroom. They will give you resources for finding housing, transportation, and local transport support networks. Then also they will give you assistance with administrative tasks such as social security registration or getting an SSN social security number that is something you need for everything here now during orientation please actively participate in orientation sessions to understand the program and also ask questions about the local area the school policies and the available resources please ask a lot of questions ask a lot of questions okay how do you adjust to the new environment now the u.s relies on student-centered learning. These classrooms, they have students doing almost everything. So if you're used to lecture method, you have to adjust so that you are a student-centered. It's very difficult to adjust from lecture to student-centered learning. So emphasize on student-centered approaches. Google student-centered approaches, see how it works. Be prepared to teach students from various cultural, linguistic, and socioeconomic backgrounds. For J1s, especially socioeconomic backgrounds, be prepared to teach students coming from rough neighborhoods. Then also, be prepared to communicate with parents. It's usually very difficult to start communicating with the parents, but be prepared to, because parents get involved, and also be prepared to manage behavior, because some students have a lot of discipline problems, and you'll be expected to manage the behavior. So as a teacher, how would you adopt? You will observe and learn from colleagues during your initial weeks. You'll maintain open communication with the school administrators. You'll use technology to your advantage. And also you'll build rapport with students and adapt to the curriculum. Okay? Good. Now, the only other thing that I want to talk about is uh, the next thing is that you'll open a bank account. Why should you do this? Because that's what, here they call it a paycheck. At uh, home, we just say check, but here they say a paycheck. You'll receive your paycheck in the bank account. That's where you'll do all your bills. Now, choose a bank that is near you because sometimes you choose a bank and then you find out that it's two hours away from where you are. Even though you might not go to the bank, but it's just a good, like psychologically, it's good to get a, a bank that is next to you. So when you're going to open a bank account, you need a passport with J1. You need a social security number. You need your DS-2019. You need a proof of address. Now, proof of address would be a lease agreement or a utility bill. Okay? Now, when you're going there, ask them to open a checking account because that's where your money will come from the school district. You can also open a savings account so that you, you, know, you can put some little money into the savings and start saving for your exit. Okay? Good. Now, Options for getting around. Public transportation. Most J1 locations do not have public transportation. If they do, they are few and erratic. So do not plan for public transportation. Just plan something else, okay? Driving. Obtain an international driver's license. If you're coming from Kenya, Cameroon, Ghana, your license is good enough. For, for example, South Carolina, you can always just drive for 90 days before you renew or you before you get a license from this place now consider buying or leasing a car consider buying a car just buy a second hand car not expensive something that can take you around okay also you can do ride sharing you can ride share with people you can your team your teachers and that will manage your costs now familiarize yourself with local tra traffic laws if you're driving and budget for transportation costs 
okay now finally look for communities to support you because you will feel isolated you will feel like you're in the new place and nobody likes you and nobody knows understands you so please look for a community that will support you in everything that you do okay this will reduce feelings of isolation will provide you with a network for advice resources companionship if something happens there's something someone you can fall back to and how do you connect do cultural organizations fellow teachers join teacher associations explore local meeting opportunities go to online platforms like facebook for international teachers meet up link uh, apps like meetup to find groups that share common interests whatsapp groups uh, telegram groups and all that so that sums your journey from the day that you just started looking for opportunity to the us to the time when you arrive in the us and you're now teaching leave a comment below if you watch this video for all the one hour and 17 no all the 50 56 minutes love you guys and uh, see you in the next one